Welcome everyone to another live stream here with our increasing epic and threat wrapping AMD Ryzen build previous and upcoming videos. And uh, we also need some more uh, light. And um, yeah, what is the only reason uh, for addressable RGB memory? And I didn't got that addressable RGB memory for addressable RGB memory. Um, video soon, but this is actually the world's fastest AMD Ryzen optimized memory that just happened to have RGB memory. Also, it has, a, has an amazing temperature sensor, which most entry-level non-RGB addressable memory also doesn't have. So yeah, plus one for temperature sensor and RGB, it's like whatever. But we wouldn't be us here if we wouldn't do some tinkering because previous video, I already hacked there some other Rust code and stuff together a year ago, live on some of those channels here with ASUS Aura Lightning, uh, Lightning <laughs> Lighting um, there on, on regular motherboard stuff. Also this workstation motherboard doesn't have that on the motherboard, but the motherboard only has eight or nine LEDs and this has, uh, each memory stick has eight addressable RGB. I will probably make a dedicated video about this. This is just here behind the scenes and stuff. So I just, it's, it works with OpenRGB, but uh, OpenRGB uh, large and not the most amazing C++ code base. So I quickly copy and pasted here the most minimal stuff together for that to work. Um, I will probably take this or clean this up or publish that among our other low level stuff on microkernel enablement. So microkernel first working feature addressable RG memory, but no, um, let's finish here some stuff. So. What you have seen here is so open RGB, you can control this, also code base. Yeah. Um, so let's finish this a little bit. I factored out here the code so the code works. I also did here some surrounding Lua code because obviously not. So what, what I want to do is display the CPU load. Not sure if uh, that works out of the box with open RGB or whatever, but I want a more small working code base. Anyway, you could theoretically add support for that to the Linux kernel, but we are not the most interested here in. Uh, monolithic single address space uh, kernel written in C. But yeah, of course that would be if you run Linux long term, a uh, proper kernel module probably would be in order. It's actually not that hard. It's just a couple of I square C um, SM bus, uh, system management bus fiddling there. Um, and also, so for that, not the greatest fancy of C as you probably might have guessed in the meantime, um, the last time I probably also did that code in Lua because what we need to do for the CPU load is pass proc stat um, that has a CPU load among other things uh, here. So we need to compute this, and need, to read, need to read the file and uh, compute the deltas and um, the, whatever you want to do from that. And yeah, parsing, parsing that in C, uh, obviously not. So yeah, a little bit Lua, I'm already mostly done. Um, so it's a little bit of behind the scene, live coding and inspiring you. Maybe also not, not everything needs to be C, not everything needs to be Python, and not everything needs to be um, um, Rust and stuff. What I want to do, you might wonder, I mean, first of all, I think it's bloody cool to have the CPU load on there. Actually, by the way, I can show you that already. I think this one was this camera. Um, if I run that uh, right now, the long term goal is to make this a uh, better infrastructure because I anyway need to also, yeah, I reverse engineered this bloody display there, also videos upcoming. Um, I just don't have this running right now. I can blitz in my own graphic, obviously, because uh, um, also, yeah, USB connected, obviously, it's the usual gaming stuff. Um, but yeah, some auxiliary display is certainly also nice for Linux and microkernel pros like us. Um, so stay tuned for that fun stuff to come. So right now, so this is off because now I run this program. If I now do some load, like compiling the latest Linux kernel, do we also have time? Oh yeah, uh, time. So um, then this should light up in red, uh, which also maybe I, yeah, the sun, it's daylight and not night and stuff. So uh, maybe not the most amazing to do this. Maybe a little bit darker. I saw 400. Ah, why is the screen? All right, I didn't map the color yet. So this, um, I thought I make this red, 
But you, so this works in theory. The cool thing is, uh, well, cool thing, cool thing. Of course, if you have massive parallel load like the Linux kernel, this will just light up completely. This um, uh, yeah, 4.6 gigahertz super boosting. Also, let's quickly make this a red because I didn't want this green. Uh, one thing is, of course, uh, if you have long-term embarrassing, embarrassing parallel multi-threading stuff running, then it lights up completely. So maybe some additional animation stuff is in order. But for now, so I have here color RGB, red, green, blue. Um, by the way, this the max appears to be probably 127. Um, at least it doesn't get brighter after 127. So I, well, I can't see the difference between 120 and 127, but I guess it's maybe seven bit. But yeah, because mm. anyway, probably smaller steps of dimming you don't see anyway. But um, so this I square I square C bus this is by, by the way the ASOS Aura protocol thing as this C plus plus. So just prototyping here, quick prototyping how you do a little bit of C plus plus, a little bit of Lua. Um, in the long term, I would either yeah certainly not in C. Yeah, so yeah, Aura register right. Aura, Asus, Aura, register, read, write, block and stuff. Um, so this is just some C++ prototyping. It's not production. Just uh, I just wanted something a little bit more readable, a little bit more tiny of 100. Yeah, how much lines of code? So you need like 160 lines of code if you use the Linux kernel I square C as a bus infrastructure. Um, and this is also, yeah, this is why I'm not using wanting to use open RGB because I just want like 200 lines of code or something um, anyway um, so also ridiculous they're ordering here um, as this is just if colors are empty then but we supply the colors um, the colors are did I had this commented or did I think I probably deleted it yeah but I didn't want to transform this in the C++ code the colors are um, just no, not red, green, blue. I think they are red, blue, green. It's like, yeah, um, ASOS and, and DIY hobby project there in the garage. And also, this is basically the previous video the whole BIOS affair of everything YOLO together because we allow this uh, wannabe corporations um, do the innovation and uh, development of PC standards. Speaking of which, I think it would be amazing if there would have been some RGB uh, standard and also with some proper configuration, but it's like, yeah, they all your load just uh, RGB lighting stuff together. So let's um, for now uh, swap this here in the Lua part. So this is color component one, three, and then two, because that is how we do in 2021. Also, probably uh, RGB, I mean, either it's RGB or uh, RGB BGR, but yeah, it ASUS, it's A uh, R B G because obviously. So um, save that file, uh, rerun this. Is a funny, yeah. So no, oh, you didn't, didn't even see that. I should have. I probably need a camera uh, assistant. So that is blue now. Um, it's not yet perfect. Also, if we kill the Linux kernel, let's do a. Um, Let's kill that and it is off. If we like, let's sway remove. Um, the cool thing is, um, I just um, uh, resize here, Wayland sway windows. Um, the cool thing is, you have a direct mapping, so you instantly see which of the 32 threads, um, actually, I met which of the 16 cores I, because we have 16 LEDs here in this configuration anyway. Um, I map, I combine the thread siblings so that we have 16 cores directly mapped to that. Um, let's uh, maybe scroll here, does scrolling Firefox register in? So this is scrolling Firefox. Like, yeah, maybe we shouldn't benchmark scrolling on an epic thread ripping. Let's browse like YouTube or something. And so, yeah, that, that works. And the, the super cool thing, in my opinion, I mean, first of all, I think it's the only usable thing for RGB uh, lighting. Um, the, um, oh, by the way, did I 
say blue? Actually, I think I meant red. Anyway, um, let's scroll here the, the YouTube. Um, so yeah, scrolling YouTube. Nah, but <laughs> you probably want to do this on a via Nano or Intel Core, uh, something to to see a little bit more than nothing. Um, so yeah, test testing CPU load on an epic third dropping AMD Ryzen 1550X uh, scrolling YouTube. So that is so basically the load of uh, scrolling whatever random YouTube bullshit. It's like yeah, the CPU load barely registers. Anyway, um, let's improve that a little bit um, because um, you think hey, they're uh, mapping directly the CPU load here on. Oh, so you don't. You know, that, Oops, wrong, where is this view? There is that view. Map. So as you see, this is a little bit boring. Uh -huh. I need my, probably next, I need to hack bloody keyboard uh, shortcuts for Valent OBS anymore. So this is of course a little bit boring um, if this is completely off. So I, and this is also the prototyping, right? You think, hey, wouldn't it be amazing to directly display your CPU load on those cores here um, until you try it and it's like, do um, obviously um, no CPU load. This is of uh, not the most um, amazing looking. So RGB hundred. All right. So this is um, correct. Um, now this is uh, indeed um, blue, but this is not what I meant. Uh, what I meant. So what? Let's implement this a little bit nicer. Um, let's call this like foreground and background color or something. It doesn't really matter much. And let's make the background color uh, blue like this. Let's maybe like 32 doesn't matter too much. Just like dim, so f also dimming effects. And um, so that's the idle, like idle blue um, is not as bright as um, the red CPU load. I could also let's uh, maybe let's see how how this how the visuals will be. And um, so the foreground, we could, should we call this idle and load, load, idle, background, foreground, no, it doesn't really, idle, color, load, color, doesn't, yeah, whatever. And so red, green, blue, let's make this full red. And uh, scale those color between idle, blue, and load, red. And of course, in a real application, you would want, um, obviously, some configuration how to map this. Also, the, the thread sibling stuff is right now hard coded here. Theoretically, we need to load this from proc. The other thing is, of course, everyone has different uh, addressable RGB, mem RGB memory. So, theoretically, could be additional um, combining or whatever for um, less threads or less and more memory. Anyway, so right now we formats this here. And um, one note, um, certainly sure other people would use Python or Perl or Ruby or something, but I really like Lua for its keep it stupid minimal here and um, let for also starting with parsing, right? Um, reading here line by line, um, matching the values into some nice table um, of values, uh, all the stuff that is totally Annoying in uh, C plus C and even in C plus uh, plus, which is also um, with my microkernel thinking, um, do I really want to use C plus plus or something? Because um, ironically, it's, it's much better C plus plus is over C. It's of course not the most amazing. And yeah, people ask, is, is this Lua? Yes, this is Lua. In my opinion, one of the most keep it stupid, simple, beautiful, minimal. Um, sure, it has its flaws. Um, it has its performance with Lua JIT, but yeah, nothing is perfect, not Rust, not Lua. Anyway, so let's scale this. So this would be here as a colors. Um, so let's maybe compute this here. Local RGB equals our color. Um, and oops, I somehow pressed something stupid only left on YouTube. So this would be format RGB. Oh, wait a second. So no, I made the same mistake again because this is RBG. And let's scale the color between. Um, we could do this in two steps for readability. So this is now load color multiplied by load. And um, load, load, and 
load and as we work here with percentages it works as simple as adding that so that oh, also isn't I find also multiplier return values rather beautiful I think not even Rust has that uh, which I find a bit of a shame and stuff sure you can simulate this with uh, various constructs even C++ but whatever so our um, so we could uh, write this in one line, but this is a little bit less readable. So let's just add this together in a second step. So did I, uh, I G B did this a So R plus, so adding the idle color percentage. Um, we have here load and idle is, by the way, maybe as we now need I, um, idle for the scaling, idle is, is in this proc stats of field 4 so idle we can use this directly um, and um, I have here load so this is field 4 actually not, not sure if that is 100% correct with also um, CPU uh, I, I, IRQ and uh, soft IRQ I didn't check how the kernel report that so I'm not entirely sure if IRQ and soft IRQ are part in system or not but whatever and uh, so lo uh, idle is field 4 of the total sum and load is um, 1 minus idle. So first color the load color multiplied by load and the idle color multiplied by idle. That should give us a crossfade between red and blue. Let's see how that looks. Idle and idle color rg. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I have here the Bloody yeah. Um, who thought also this happens when you let um, non-professional companies do PC component, component stuff in their basement and declare it intellectual property and no we can't give you the specification or SDK because top secret um, we don't want other people to copy our RGB lighting interface. Uh, anyway, R plus idle color RGB 1, 2, 3, now this is in order and rg plus b plus um, and here is one more idle and that probably should do let's see so it looks a little bit pinkish or so let's extend video feed that is the wrong one maybe that one um, does this, why does this a little bit, does this look more pinkish? Yeah, that is strange. Let's build the Linux kernel. Mm, why does this have, should this not be completely, uh, no, the sun is of course, probably I should do that in the night when we have less. I can also ISO down probably for I saw 320 maybe. Um, not entirely. Maybe I maybe we made some typo. But maybe let's quickly start building a Linux kernel just for the fun of it. And yeah, probably I should do that at night or something. Somehow, yeah, you you think this should look totally amazing until you realize you either have no load or full load so maybe we need additional I don't know, know the red kicks in and full though um, we could for example pull the uh, blue idle stuff uh, with some animation of course this stuff has animation built, built in but the problem is um, either you directly address it with RGB values or you have some animation running um, you can't fully addressably control, statically control this with the animation running. So if you, um, but yeah, it does not look um, the most amazing yet. Um, let's uh, further, I mean, besides, um, but leave in the comments below how you would um, maybe, so this is bluish, why does, maybe they have a typo somewhere, let's double check that. Um, 
what do we have? Oh, this is also the wrong file. So one, two, three by load. Idle, idle, idle. One, two. I don't see a typo. Immediately, um, also in an ideal world, we would maybe want used to use some RGB color function helper stuff and, um, or other matrix scaling by something. Load, load, load. Idle, idle, idle. On a first glance, that looks okay. Um, not sure why. Some of this. Well, this looks a little bit pinkish, not really sure why, though. Um, you know what, let's maybe lock the values so that we actually see what we compute there. Oops. And that would be that here, print arcs. And so, yeah, this is... Okay, because we have a tiny little bit of load, some values are not zero. This is a crossfade. Um, red, blue, green. Uh, what are oh, right? Uh, no, wait. What? Red, blue, green. RGB, RGB, RGB. A little bit con. Use. Should this not be? Uh, yeah, this is also super annoying if companies need to use co co color component ordering that no sane person in the world would use. So red, green, blue. All right, red, red, blue, green. Okay. Um, it somehow looks a little bit too pinkish for my taste. Maybe it's a little bit too little anyway. Let's. Um, Modify this version mouse cursor. Yeah, my mouse cursor. Um, let's make this a little bit brighter. Now let's try 48. Now yeah, that is a little bit more blue. I wonder if this is fully correct. Also, really should get someday my. Uh, I mean, the funny thing is, in, in, is the sun is shining so much right now. It looks, I see it better in the, in the OBS display there. I slightly wonder, or may, ah, you know what? This, I think this is the sunshine that makes this basically. Uh, if I shadow that here, it looks more blue. So I think probably it's the sun making this whitish plastic. Um, so let's see how that, so building the Linux kernel, um, we should get, yeah, it, look, it looks less spectacular than I hoped it would look like. So we have one core, why do we, Get and by the way, no less sun, more red. Um, maybe this. I'm, I'm w wondering how to make this better visuals. Let's do one. Let's do one load like open as L speed or something. Yeah. So we should have one core loaded. Let's see if we get one. This is probably this core loaded, I guess. It looks a little bit less spectacular than I thought it would. Um, let me check with top. We have, yeah, we have core 16 fully loaded. Oh, wait a second, this migrated. And the cool thing is, I mean, besides, I hoped it would be more visu visible, um, is that theoretically you, but, but somehow, all right, so core 16 is that one, but and now it's migrating. And the cool thing is that theoretically you see your um, operating system, um, 
migrating this. This is what I always wondered, uh, how the Linux kernel scheduler, like there versus AMD, Ryzen performance, marginalities and Windows and stuff. Theoretically, you could see your task migrating stuff in real time. So right now we have um, one core loaded. So I'm not entirely happy with the color scheme and maybe it would be more so it migrated there for a second. We have a tiny little bit background um, load, right? With a tiny little bit of OBS. But um, I wonder that the Linux kernel migrates this anywhere uh, between, oh, wait a second. I know this is actually the other. All oh, right, so the cool thing is, by the way, uh, the way this works. So um, this is the LED zero. Um, so, uh, or was it? I think it was. Uh, yeah. And I first was wondering whether I should swap this. So right now I fill this from here. So the, this is the natural order of first addressable, um, first addressable memory stick. And so the bit starts. So this is bit, bit or LED zero to seven. And um, he also, and I first wondered whether I should swap this, but then I thought, because naturally you would maybe start either um, either on the, from the left and also maybe from the bottom. But then I thought, because the two core complexes are anyway left and right, and maybe the core, um, of course, I don't know, but well, theoretically, maybe we should fact check that with an infrared camera or something. But it would be interesting to know which of the core complexes is the zero and or first and second um, for this, so that this theoretically would map of um, the core complexes left and right. But um, yeah, does not look the most phenomenal, especially as we have either idle or either either we are idle or we have full load, um, unless we have some configure script running. So maybe some additional animation. Um, Maybe some additional animation stuff would be in order uh, for this to look more amazing. Um, but leave in the comments below what uh, what you think. It is. Of, I will anyway. In any case, make a dedicated video. This is just some brainstorming here, live behind the scenes with some coffee. And again, I also mostly do this because I want to control the pump a little bit more intelligent. Because right now I have this um, previous video, probably um, I have this AIO pump uh, running by its own control. The problem is with that, if you have the pump not 100%, the liquid gets warm too slowly. So if we have our Linux kernel compiling, it takes quite some seconds, if not up to a minute, for the pump to significantly increase. So theoretically, um, you would want to have your operating system probably control the pump a little bit faster and spin the pump up instantly when you have CPU load and not like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 seconds after the fact. Um, yeah, so we have still open SSL running, so still mostly there is a top thread. Um, anyway, leave in the comments below what, uh, what you think about all the RDB craze. And uh, also, yeah, CPU loads, so 16 or sometimes right now 16. Why do we have... Um, all right, you know what, why uh, this is uh, 16 is the first one because this are the thread siblings. I slightly wonder, but maybe this is intentional, um, that uh, also which core do we have now? Six, uh, now we have core 8. For whatever reasons, yeah, sometimes the kernel. So eight does it make all oh, right? Yeah, eight is the so one zero to seven, eight to fifteen, and then the thread siblings of uh, SMT. So yeah, there you have that. Um, probably too boring as it. Um, I slightly wonder which additional animation we actually should apply. Not uh, maybe makes us. Uh, 31, 32, does all not that matter that much, but whatever. Um, and 
runs so this is uh, open this is a benchmarking running there because why not and then compiling the Linux kernel of course initially uh, only turbo boosting there um, one way to oh, so I really need my hotkeys back for that so Linux kernel again just configure uh, and stuff and then it's like now yeah. somehow I was hoping but yeah sure what what was I thinking if we load all cores we get all cores uh, light it up anyway uh, I wonder that well of course although yeah at least some AIO controller there also in Python super slow stuff um, yeah but some of the Linux kernel people are a little bit slow with yeah anyway um, one thing so to make this more interesting maybe some pulsing up um, pulsing animation also why does this somehow I wish but you know the thing is it doesn't look that reddish I think it's the Sun because if I make it a little bit more um, shadow then it appears a little bit more reddish but yeah. um, so maybe some, maybe some animation we could also theoretically additionally monitor the frequencies of the CPUs and um, additional like make the um, makes a full load not 127 in RGB but only 100 and use like additional uh, nearly 30% headroom for turbo boosting so that turbo boosted cores are additional uh, illuminated uh, just some random thoughts of how make to make this a little bit um, nicer and of course and uh, maybe in general some animation of uh, having this uh, pulling a little bit so that like Knight Rider kind of phasing in and out for that to uh, be more although the certainly the, the problem is with um, pointless animation is of course that they interfere with uh, with visuals of if you have there's some pulling of just pulling then of course um, you don't see turbo boosting uh, lighting up and stuff as much um, so Yeah, Carlos is uh, exactly playing with RGB LEDs because why not? Um, and um, Angelo says might be nice to just see the change of color based on the average CPU usage. Welcome, Danny. Um, Angelo says uh, also for notifications make it flash well so the problem is I don't constantly look there but the biggest pro thing of um, my also you could certainly have it blink uh, like a desktop notification as long as a desktop notification but this is also certainly the more useful things and um, well especially if you have an um, open case uh, and by the way usually there is I took the glass off because it was pointless to make a live stream so much too um, yeah, uh, because otherwise you would only see reflections. Obviously, I have usually had some tempered glass, right? Um, but the CPU load I found useful because that is, of course, the thing you come into the room or you you have basically a free or tiny auxiliary display of touch bar kind of thing to to see some load, especially for me compiling the old whole day and stuff. So, um, you don't need to toggle there what your Linux compiled stuff there let's see by the way if we so one all right so this um, yeah but some of this with the colors I'm not yet the super most impressed so um, yeah but what did I want to change I think I wanted to change something didn't I um, Also, right now, I'm not sure. Maybe you hear the fence a little bit. If we have um, some general cooling daemon uh, similar to the Apple G5, also has some Linux kernel wind farm infrastructure. Um, if for this kind of AIO or other liquid pump controlling stuff, 
because right now the CPU load is not, uh, I, I control C that and the fans are still ramping down slowly. So um, theoretically that could uh, be much more snappy and instant. So what else did we wanted to do? Um, the load was there. Um, was there anything of... Um, anyway, not sure if it's worth to play much more uh, with that. Um, so actually, by the way, was there anything else to compile today? By the way, there's also a new Linux kernel out for those who are wondering. So security, also security related, right? And uh, best upgrade to the latest and greatest security patch. There are some, by the way, things I didn't even mark this CVE, but even libio ring and a couple of other things of denial of service and other stuff, uh, which by the way, LVM probably still no release. We're waiting there for uh, 12, but that is also not yet out. Um, so yeah, that's it for the most part. Um, theoretically, we could uh, go quickly a little bit over the code. So the Lua code is just as simple, actually, by the way, this I don't really need anyway. So basically just thread sibling. Um, let's maybe make this a little bit nice, a little bit live programming. Um, let's copy here the read file. Maybe I also should put your read file and uh, stuff into a shared file of micro library. And uh, because this we can use for reading the thread, the, oh, wait, the thread sibling wasn't as easily readable, darn. Um, <clears throat> the thread sibling was a little bit stupid. <coughs> Sorry, this. And name CPU zero. Uh, okay, nine, whatever. System CPU zero and uh, topology. Grab here all this stuff and um, CPU call list. Um, I slightly wonder. Grab CPU all topology uh, thread. Uh, how does this work? Your font to what is even yeah, this bit? Set. Okay, fine. Because parsing this stuff, this is also why I've done this in Lua, and uh, why in general um, we need better programming languages in C and C++, obviously, and even in Rust, it's a little bit. The problem is a lot of this stuff is way too dynamic that I would want to write such code in a um, statically typed language of just dynamically looking up some stuff and building, sticking up some values. Um, so yeah, this is a little bit annoying to parse, especially if there would be more than two, but I mean, we could iterate. So basically, how the, the way we could do that is, yeah, I mean, treating this, yeah, for what it is, comma separated list and iterating over those. Yeah, maybe for another day. Um, so the, the way this works here, it's surprisingly, um, surprisingly um, annoying to read this. So we have proc stat and uh, we need to read this file. This uh, file looks like Proc uh, start. And so here's the CPU stuff. Uh, this is all combined and then per thread of which we have 32. And then other interrupt and other context processes running stuff. And uh, this is uh, like system user, uh, user system uh, IO wait. Uh, Wait a second, system or user, a uh, user nice system idle, I think, and then IRQ, soft IRQ, and, uh, and whatnot. And um, then we need, uh, th this is in my opinion rather annoying to do in C, uh, C++ a little bit better, but not amazing, and Rust also not so much more amazing. But in, this is also why I 
for this kind of stuff. Yeah. Python, probably not Perl, Ruby, all my preference, Lua. Uh, so this file, if our file is not yet open, so if not file, then file I open proc start for reading. Uh, we reuse this, so seek to the beginning. We need, because this are the total since boot, we need the previous stat to compute the, d the delta for that. Then for all for all CPUs, read all lines, match those values, so line match. Uh, this is, yeah, the difference between day and night, a good string, uh, good luck in uh, in C with string token 8, uh, A2i, is it ASCII2, oh, whatever, amazing functions, A2i or is this ASCII2, convert your yeah, string to integer or other fun stuff, it's like, yeah, and then so crushing the stuff left and right, buff, buffer out of bounds and so on. So parsing this like you would do in, in the modern world, CPU stuff and, and all the fields is decimal, all the values in a nice table, parsing as a CPU out, first field is CPU, parsing that, um, skipping over the non-numerically indexed uh, all CPUs combined average, um, remove that from the table, the CPU field, and then for all of those convert this to number, number because we had a string, store this in the stats, so this is just um, Converting all this to number and then storing all the CPUs, we basically create a two-dimensional two array here in Lua tables until not see stop parsing when we reached the first non-CPU line, like interrupts. And then the thread siblings is probably I should like yeah I should open that and open the file and iterate um, that. Um, opening all the 32 files a little bit time wasting maybe maybe only open the first and apply the same pattern for all for performance reason of context switching to the kernel three times of open read close uh, certainly unnecessary stuff so yeah this is combining the thread siblings uh, for all the stats for i in number of stats thread sibling um, plus one um, why do I fit plus one thread sibling plus one minus one? What? Why did I do that though? Is this why we have shitty? Wait a second, I'm a little bit confused now. Thread sibling plus one. Uh, should this not be sixteen? All right. All right. I think. Mm. All ah, right, so this is 17. All ah, right, so this is from reverse. So this is like 32 threads to from from 32 to 17. Um, reverse order line minus one. Then this two CPU lines like CPU thread one and two in the two dimension two dimensional stats. Just combining those and deleting those. Doing this reverse for Lua special handling of um, arrays. Um, this is why I simply nil them from reverse to elegantly performantly. Delete them, compute the loads for all the remaining stats of combined thread siblings. Um, differences, compute the differences from the previous uh, second, because it's an absolute war clock time counter since boot. Sum this up, so for all the pairs in stats, div z, and then combine this. Um, can we do this in one? Maybe we can, I mean, performance optimizing. Lua stuff uh, diff equals also there is a double space um, theoretically diff equals I mean basically you know what let's sum sum this up um, to in, in one go because performance so that would be sum equals sum plus this difference diff field just as we did here. And uh, so that certainly probably should result in probably nanosecond higher performance on this thread ripping CPU. Let's uh, print that for a second. It's like, yeah, quite some zero load, as it should look like. I um, guess it should work. And so idle time, as seen previously, the field four. The load is uh, probably the 
non-idle time, hopefully, if this Linux kernel numbers are sane. And um, then RGB, as seen at the beginning of the live stream, computing here the crossfade of the two load numbers. Load, probably one, two, three. Load, 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 uh, idle, 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 idle. I guess it's fine. Um, in an ideal world, maybe it's a little bit, um, a little bit, um, not the most, um, yeah, space for like real world space sensitive file name stuff, but yeah. But in, in an upcoming episode of making this all Lua or something, we wouldn't have this inter process execution here anyway. So anyway, if you want this faster than sleep.5, then we uh, have a little bit more, I wonder. Um, If we time building this kernel, does this look? Uh, yeah, maybe half a second is a little bit more interactive. We know that we would also be yeah, more in interactive, but also more CPU cycle wasting. But so yeah, it's one. Yeah, leave me in the comments below. As per as per so often, you think it's amazing. Um, and uh, the, the difference between hazes is, is probably is amazing and yeah, it's like fading between blue and red, it's like now. Yeah. But um, I mean, if we build something, um, if we have something not totally full load all the time, also what is this here? Uh, do we have something to build? Maybe not like building x86 target. It's, oh, why does this fully rebuild? Am I in the right tree? All oh, right, I maybe deleted that. Um, yeah, anyway. But I need this anyway for better pump control. I didn't, neither the liquid control stuff in Python, nah, super slow. And um, I want this in my um, Lua code anyway. I have here already proof of concept blitting that with my UI stuff. I hope I can show you that. Where's my mouse cursor? Hello, mouse, mouse. There. Maybe I need a larger mouse cursor. Um, the... Um, what did I name that? That was like... Apps all right, I think I named this Oaks display. And um, also, so that would be that right now. Um, as seen on some Reddit post previously. And right now with some static values, I also need, uh, so the CPU load, we need the same. The, uh, the liquid would be from the AIO and um, the pump and, pump and fan. We would con compute ourselves from that. But that looked pretty amazing. I think I not only posted that. So how does this? Yeah, not the, the most not the most impressed with the T2 load of that animation. If you have amazing ideas for the animation, leave in the comments below. I also take a last look on the um, all the comments in the meantime. I had here a. Oh, so this was wrong. Um, yeah, it's amazing future of you resize something and that's all what you get. I posted it also to this Instagram some time ago if you want to follow for that fine stuff. Yeah, here. Of, yeah, this is how it looks um, if you have this on the display. Oh, wait a second, this was. This, this, is, this is how it looks if you have some default stuff on the. This is, this is the largest we get. get. Um, and. Where was it not? Hello? And uh, did I not have this on this display? Wait a second. Ah, uh, oh, here. So this is how this looks on the pump. Um, also, I think so without this border, this border was only my own circle drawn in my own UI. But um, certainly better than that. Just I also the reason I didn't 
publish that oh yeah video coming need to finish um, integrating that with my own code and stuff um, because yeah don't want to run this super slow python code for and in general anyway that is the fun that uh, pro people have with their auxiliary pump display and rgb memory um, let's um, let's um, so yeah gcc uh, compiling gcc i mean yeah you probably get the point also yeah so right now we have 0 0.5 seconds i wonder do we need that i mean the problem is that this kind of long running load so right now gcc but i mean it's not entirely bad i mean but also i think i think you want 0 0.5 i mean everything else is probably too slow i mean it's not it's not entirely bad I mean, may maybe plus one for, um, plus one for for idea and execution and, and, and minus one for what's the most interesting looking. Anyway, so yeah, let's take a look at the comments. Surprisingly zero drop frames today. Um, so yeah, further refinement necessary, including um, also what you, I s some are not the most yeah, sway and while in the future of Linux desktop except when you try to use it. So yeah, combined with that, it's probably more amazing. Um, and otherwise, leave me the comments below. Um, let's see what else we have in the comments. Um, um, normalize load to, what normalize load to average CPU where max frequency is 100% LED. Um, Angelo asks, share the code. Yeah, I will share. I mean, right now it is one, um, right now it's one C++ hack thing for having that a little bit more. I mean, the open RGB code had here open coded byte swapping of I've, like shifting. I mean, yeah, you, you don't, op pro tip, you don't open code byte swapping. Like they had their um, of register shift eight uh, ended with hex ff00 or with like yeah thank you very much um and, and other yeah um but i mean this the problem is sharing i don't really have a repository and um but eventually i will share this i the problem is also this is not that easy to do in lua because here are really ugly io ctls um, that are really ugly to map from C to something else. So this I this I square C S M bus is really ugly, really ugly struct here. Um, this is a union of uh, I square C S M bus data. So I mean, it's actually not much code. It's just a really ugly OCTL to use. Uh, need to guru meditate this. Also, this uh, this code is using our proprietary UI stuff. So, uh, um, if I open source this, uh, this code is just way too cool to just open source as BSD or GPL. If I open source this, then only under some fair license um, of you can use it for your hobby projects, but if you use it commercially, you need to donate something or so, because this is years of amazing UI enablement. Um, someone else could use M prime to load X numbers, of course. Have you seen the feature which does keyboard has? Which feature has does keyboard? Um, Roland says parser combinators can be relatively nice to use. Uh, Nom in Rust or using ellipse or probably uh, overkill. I mean, one thing I would want um, this Lua code is, of course, not the super most high performing, but um, one uh, what would be cool is also, by the way, maybe a better order of this is. Uh, left there and debug display. 
cluttered with the picture and picture view. Um, it, this code is of course not super high performance. It would of course be cool if that would dynamically create really high performance um, parsing because this is relatively slow, implemented, ironically implemented in C um, for each string component, execute some stuff, but yeah. Um, what else do we, but so maybe some Rust or other, yeah, but mm, we will see. Um, for your real estate size, you can run XIs on the CPU cooler display. Yeah, you could theoretically do that, but um, some temperature stuff uh, probably more usable. Um, what else do we have there? Can we make video talking about code in the future? Um, we'll have a dependency with the Rust compiler. Yeah, we can talk about this in the future as well as we will. Um, do other stuff, Marco Kernel. By the way, fun fact: I'm not sure if you, uh, oops, I'm not sure if you see that, but um, I have there some pretty hefty CPU cooler modification videos coming. So uh, basically, this this build, um, I'm the, the problem is also, and um, if I do cool stuff, um, then I don't have to time to video edit. So the build, so the, there is a previous, there are a couple of previous build videos, um, initial Ryzen 2000, um, maybe even swapping that to the 5950X. And there is a build video of this thermal take um, core case of uh, overkill. In the meantime, I have a couple of videos not edited um, even of as long as two months already because I simply have no time. Maybe I should actually hire a video editor assistant. Um, you have not seen a video of uh, the 59. I, I actually wanted to make a proper review here. This is 5950X. Uh, the mighty yes, they exist. Um, the AIO liquid cooler theoretically video. Uh, share, like, and subscribe. Nah. Uh, the world's fastest CL14 3800 memory, at, at least partially. Yeah, right now, I have um, half of that, but yeah, I, I didn't really need that. But uh, video, share, like, and subscribe. Um, there in the. Uh, what do you, um, and then I modded the case for the fence here and um, yeah, anyway, and, and some fastest PCIe for NVMe SSDs for. Anyway, but yeah, this build, um, in my opinion, getting a little bit crazy. Previous overkill video, now it's certainly more overkill, especially not sure. Leave in the comments below who can, who knows what I've done to that CPU because it is also not stock. But yeah, that's for another video, that's it for this. Um, live stream, I have to go. Um, I, at least I'm happy that the RGB code here is working. Um, leave me in the comments below how useful or cool that is. Um, if you power this on by default, it's running some uh, rainbow animation, which is I think this is more useful than the bloody rainbow spectrum animation thing, which has zero purpose. And, yeah, at least this on the first glance. Yeah. Of course, even more useful would be on, on a server case or something. But anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you learned something. Um, as usual, looking forward to your comments. And now we're building Clang. Actually, so yeah, we're building Clang, so yeah. Full load, mostly full load. I mean, the coolest thing probably is the direct mapping of LEDs to the CPU cores, and maybe even they match if if the right CCX. Maybe I should someday figure that out. But uh, maybe this even matches one to one um, for right and left. If not, we could swap this. But yeah, it's probably the coolest thing that you see directly, which. Um, are used. Um, yeah, but that's it for this video. I hope you learned something, found this interesting. Uh, don't, I probably should make really more. Um, also, I don't need to build this right now because we are waiting for LVM Kling. Um, but yeah, the, the long term purpose of this would, of course, be uh, for own driver infrastructure stuff to have hardware monitoring stuff. Um, more system-wide. 
but um, yeah, I could also write a Linux kernel driver with it, but it shouldn't be the most difficult. But um, I also mostly don't see, <laughs> sorry, a point of uh, doing C code in 2021. Anyway, yeah, the, the problem is if, he, if I just live, live stream here some hours of coding, it's not the most interesting. Um, I hope this was already mostly a summary, which was, hey, one hour. So, gotta go. Hope you learned something and to see you soon for the next videos and tinkering to come.